welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are every day. People like to welcome you all to the show. I'd like to thank everyone that purchased the movie that we just finished. It's called Black's Journey. Uh, you can find it on FlexNet TV, which is F L E X N E T TV, and also at VCM Films. Dot gumroad dot com. It's great. I mean, I'm getting a lot of good response, a lot of great reviews. So definitely check it out. But before we get into today's topic, right, I was sitting in my room watching a early 1980s game between Oklahoma Sooners and uh, the Texas Longhorns, right? And I was hearing. Uh, from the three-yard line, Buster Rhymes from the three to the four. He handed off to Buster Rhymes, and I was like, wait a minute. But is that any relations to the rapper Buster Rhymes, right? So I went to old faithful Google and looked up Buster Rhymes, and he played for the Minnesota Vikings. He had the record. Uh, for the most yardage in a kickoff return, he held that record up until 2013. He had uh, did two years uh, for a carjacking. And he was the inspiration behind the rapper Buster Rhymes. His name was George Buster Rhymes. Right. Number four, play for the Oklahoma Sooners. I just thought that was something that was just terrific as far as trivia to give you guys. I'm, you know, it shocked me because it's a rarity, you know. You hear the name Buster Rhymes and then you think of the rapper Buster Rhymes and, and you wonder, well, I wonder if they were family members and I wonder if Buster Rhymes' last name was Rhymes. But, though, uh, come to find out that uh, he was the inspiration behind the rapper Buster Rhymes having the name Buster Rhymes as his rap name into his rap career, right? Uh, There's something we want to share. We do things like that on Verbal Big Radio. But uh, today's topic really mainly is about council culture, right? And another show, man, that that, that, um, inspired me as well to do this show on council culture was a show called Let Him Go, right? And Let Him Go, and it's it's being played on um, HBO Max and uh, on other platforms, right? It's a story of a, 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 a couple who lost their son. He fell off a horse and died, broke his neck, died, whatnot. But the mother to... Uh, their son's child, right, married a wee boy, right, who was kind of rough. He slapped the mother and he hit the grandchild, right, or the child of the 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 couple who lost, who died, broke his neck falling off the horse. So they wanted to get that child out of that house. So they went, you know, in search uh, for the family. So they was going around asking about wee boys. And actually, they found where they lived. And actually, wee boys heard that they were looking for them and whatnot. So then the wee boys were kind of like a a redneck, gruff, rowdy family raised by this tough mother who went by old, uh, old hillbilly country rules in a sense, right? And so uh you know they they were rough, uh they were portrayed the wee boys were portrayed as not having any culture or they weren't mannerable, you know, just just wild uh you know ruffians you'd say, right? And so the uh father they chopped the fingers off the father, whatever, you know uh and but anyway he convinced uh well no he tried to convince um the mother of the child to leave with him and go back and stay with them and bring the child because they didn't want that child to grow up 
under in that environment and ended up under that type of way that they were conducting themselves. And so what happened was after they chopped the fingers off of the grandparent who came to take the child away, he goes back, gets the shotgun, you know, he shoots, it was a shootout. Anyway, the mother runs off with the child and at the end, the house, he sets the house on fire and the house burnt up the wee boys and their mother, right? Canceling that culture, which actually was significant because what it's telling you is that Hollywood is getting ready to cancel the imagery of the rough, the, the redneck. The the hillbilly who uh bagging Trump who the Yeehaw boys in the sense. Hollywood is canceling that culture. You know, they they they're killing that character. Right? It, it it's over. Right. Now they're trying to do that with the black male and trying to demasculinate the black male. But what they fail to realize you can never demasculinate the black male because the black male been here for so long and the black male enjoys being a man. So it's in you can't, they're, they're trying, right? They'll try to make you think that, uh, that the black male, they'll put his face on, um, uh, certain, uh, homosexual shows, uh, uh, agendas have the RuPaul's and and make it seem as if uh, just a bunch of black men are flocking to um, that way of life, and it's not true. It's not true. Uh, you would never. They would never be able to kill off our character or to kill us off. As far as the imagery and being proud to be a black man, you know, they can't do it. They, they would like to do it. And the reason being is because they don't, they don't like, um, that aggressive or that man taking the lead, but it's been that way since the beginning of the time, right? And you have females, you have women who likes the man to be in charge and they love being feminine, right? But somewhere uh, in the midst of all of that, someone is behind the scenes saying, we can't get our agenda through or what we want to portray to the people or the narrative that we want uh, to be the lead thought in society as long as the black man is in his masculine form. We have to tone that down some, and they having a hard time. I mean, they trying. They even had uh, black men in dresses. They had black men kissing other black men. They try. I mean, it's, they have an agenda behind it, but it's not going to work. Now, on the other hand, with the with them assassinating the character of the white male, well, their time of rulership is coming to an end because it was the foundation that it was created on. It wasn't created on a foundation of truth and justice. It was created on a foundation of 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 thievery. I'm gonna just come. I, I'm going to overpower you and I'm going to take what's, what, what's yours. I'm going to make it mine and I'm going to oppress you to the degree that you'll be so weak that you can't come and take back what used to be yours. Now, one thing that's upsetting white supremacy is the fact that they had a, and when I say they, I mean white, white supremacy had a 400 year start. Right now, prior to that four hundred year start, right, you had blacks who were ruling the globe, the planet. 
Go all the way to Spain, the Moors ruling Spain, Africa, Timbuktu, Egypt, trading, the uh, you know the fall of the black rulership. Uh, you could say start happening when Alexander the Great goes from Rome into Egypt, right? But prior to that, Rome and Greece was going to black Egypt and black Africa, studying, right? Getting knowledge and was bringing that knowledge back and teaching. They they were shaping their schools just like Egypt had. They were they were teaching mathematics and science and music and the arts uh, f- on the same structure as what was going on in Egypt. Then some Yahoo had a a brilliant idea and was like, "Hey, you know what?" Why don't we just come together, meaning uh, white people? Why don't we just come together and let's take what Egypt and... Because you got to remember, Egypt stretched all the way to the Americas. It, it, it was like the, 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 the rule. It ruled the whole everything from, from Peru, Mexico to North America on back to Africa. At one point, Egypt ruled all that, right? So they were like, well, let's find a way to where we can be the new rulers and we'll suppress uh, the the black rulership, and the, which it, it happened. They did that. Uh, you got to remember in America, as I always state, it was a period of time where blacks couldn't learn to read or write, but... That was all a process of giving the Caucasians a 400-year head start. And after that 400 years, what did it, what did it take? I'm going to tell you how many years it took. I think that's 35, make it 1900s, and uh, 100 years, make it uh, the 2000s, right? So that's 135 years. So in 155 years, right, and I'm counting from 1865, black folk have been making strides, right, which has been kept down for 400 years. But after 1865, black, well, even before then, but we just started 1865, black folks making strides, moving, understand, what is this? Learning English, learning how to read Opening up businesses. Uh, so what what happened? Uh, okay, okay. Y'all moving too fast. Um, we need to do uh, reconstruction. We need to implement black codes. We need to create Jim Crow laws. Follow through that. Okay, we're going to have to make um, heroin and prostitution uh, plague the black community. Got over that. Steady moving. In the eighties, oh, we're gonna have to hit you with the crack. Got over there. We're gonna, to, we're gonna have to hit him with AIDS. Got over there. We're gonna have to get him with COVID. Yeah, getting over there. We're gonna have to get him with the Delta virus. Getting over there. You know, we're gonna have to pull their right to vote. Yeah, I mean, they pulling out all the stops, and you know, and and the black and brown keep coming. Now, why do I say black and brown? Because we cousins. <laughs> and when you say black, what are you saying? You say black. Are you saying? The black Dominican, the black Haitian, the black American, the black Peruvian, what, what, what are you, you know, black Caribbean, what, all one family, moving, right? Now, this last ditch effort is to assassinate or kill off the black man's character, to assassinate his character, right? So they'll portray black men in movies as uneducated. Or a slave, or the butler, or docile, weak, or homosexual. All right. That's that's their effort to suppress the rise of black people in America. All right. But in time, that's not going to work either. And the reason why it's not going to work because black men like being black men. Black folks, we like our melanin, right? We like being who we are. We like black women. We we love ourselves and we love uh, what we do. 
We just now have to organize and educate, bring forth knowledge. And we working on that. We got to stop the killing. We got to stop killing each other because uh, killing each other, that was a plan too to keep you suppressed, to stop your rise. Uh, here, it's been stories on where they had these um, uh, uh, train carts would be just parked uh, in inner cities and, and, and just we sat there for three days with, with the door cracked a little bit. Right. And somebody walk across the railroad track and look and open and see all the guns. And at nighttime, they come back, snatch the gun. But it was purposely planted there. So uh, hopefully, and then we did take these weapons and use them against each other. And, and if you watch Black's Journey, it, 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 it alludes to that. You got to check it out. Um, you know, because if you understand this show, you know what's in the movie Black's Journey, right? And as I said, you can find it on FlexNet TV, subscribe, Black Owned, and or vcmfilms.gumroad.com. And so they pulling out all the stops, right, to stop the rise because they don't want to share power, right? They want it. They want white supremacy or they want it by white folks and for white folks, and that's it. And if you are allowed to come in, then they'll uh, uh, relegate a position for you. You can't be at the head, you can't be the lead, and you can't make major decisions, but you can play the assistant role. We get an assistant job, you know, just to, you know, just 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 to keep you happy, keep you calm, right? And that's not even sufficing anymore uh, because there's too much te- technology and too much knowledge out there, and people want to express what they learned. They want to bring it forth into reality. So, after we over, uh, overcome all the obstacles, now the assassin. I mean, now when, when I say assassination of your character, meaning that you can do anything. I mean, you can do, you can you can be upset and angry, right? And which is a natural emotion, but in the back of your mind, you don't. You're not having thoughts of harming or hurting anyone, or, or even becoming violent. You're just expressing your the way you feel in a angrily tone, let's say that. And they'll find a way to charge you, handcuff you, saying that you was overly aggressive. Right? We had to take you down. Right? Oh, wait a minute, how, how what happened? You know, he was just yelling and shouting. How did all of a sudden he wind up dead? In the custody of police. How'd that happen? How how can someone who is obviously upset with no weapons, but but using words of out of frustration, winds up dead? It it uh, it doesn't make sense. But they would use anything against you. Right? Why? Because they want to suppress your rise. Because they see your rise. They just want to stay in power a, a little longer. And we giving them ammo when we when we shoot each other down in the street, beefing with each other over nothing, you know, over 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 a song, or over over a ball game, or I mean over over tennis shoes, over cars, over rim, over this female, over this chick, you know, we gun each other down over some of the most dumbest things that don't even add up to be a reason of why. You shoot someone, kill them over nothing because your feelings was hurt or you caught in your emotions. It just don't add up. But they're going to use that against you. They're masters at that. Because if you don't love yourself, you're not going to love nobody else. So shooting somebody ain't nothing to you anyway. Right? He's going to make sure he's, he becomes a blockade in the process of you loving yourself or someone trying to teach you on how to love yourself. That's why you always see me bring up Mr. Farrakhan when he's teaching the knowledge of self. And it's always going to be somebody that's going to say, uh, you need to stay away from that. Why do I need to stay away from something that's going to benefit me and teaching me the proper love for self? 
Somebody got a hidden agenda and somebody needs to wake up. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and so do not, because you can't stop, you can't stop the colonizer from doing his job and wanting to remain in power and on top. Of course, he's going to do everything he can. He's not going to just sit there and lay down and be like, okay, y'all can walk over me and come on into power and just take over here. I'm just going to hand it over to you peacefully. Look at Trump in Jan- January 6th, uh, the insurrection at the Capitol building. They letting you know we ain't handing nothing No, We're tatted so-and-so up before we hand it over to you. All right? Black folks, you got to wake up out of la-la land. There is no mystery God, no spook God. You can sing, we shall overcome as much as you want. You can beg and plead and holler about how we all need to get along. Lot of but those just were those words with 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 empty uh force. Those words with no force to make the word come true. It's just at the end of the day it's just been words. Sound good, gives you a good feeling, you know, and and, and, and it's good to repeat. But as far as making it solid, you know, and having force behind it, it's just empty words, right? But much love and much praises to those who open up their own business, doing their own thing, and thriving, being the example in the community. And the hell with those who ain't trying to do nothing but just sit around and pray on another black person, wait till you catch them slipping or wait till they left their home so you can run home and steal what little values they had here with you. You're not helping the race and you're not helping us build uh, to the level where we're trying to go. So we don't need you. Verbal Pick Radio, we out.